Phil Gingrey, a Republican from the state of Georgia. And Congressman, about a week ago, this, this time, maybe a couple of hours later, we had a word from the White House that they were abandoning a piece of the Obama health care law. The class act was being jettisoned because it was just unworkable. What does this say to you as a longtime critic of this law about the, the way that the entire law is functioning? Well, it says to me that they misnamed the law. It's not the Affordable Care Act, it's the Unaffordable Care Act. Uh, and, and it starts with this uh, section, this class provision, uh, the Class Act uh, for uh, assisted uh, living uh, insurance provided by the federal government, which was put in in the, in, in the in dark of night on the Senate side under reconciliation as a tribute uh, to Ted Kennedy, who was uh, literally dying at the time. Uh, but this class act uh, was was a half-baked uh, program that in, in no way uh, was fiscally viable. And we have told Secretary Sebelius repeatedly, uh, as she has appeared before the Energy and Commerce Committee of w on which I serve, uh, that, that, that this was non-viable. Uh, and finally, last week, as you mentioned, uh, they, they, they kind of shut the door, but they left a crack open. And that's why the bill that Dr. Charles Bustani, a uh, member in the House, my colleague from Louisiana and I introduced H.R. 1173 to repeal the Class Act. And it needs to be repealed because any, anybody, the President himself, could, could open that door back open. And uh, uh, here again, it's uh, fiscal smoke and mirrors. I'm glad that the Secretary finally realize that. Congressman, you're a member of a pretty strong doctor's caucus there in the House of Representatives. Uh, you all oppose uh, the president's health care law. Uh, the, all of the Republican presidential candidates oppose the health care law. But short of getting, uh, you know, 60 Republicans in the Senate in 2012, do you think we're sort of seeing uh, people losing steam for repealing the health care law before it goes into effect? No, I don't think we're losing steam. You are right, uh, and you said short of getting 60, and even if we, uh, and I do believe we'll take over the majority in the Senate uh, and maintain our majority in the House, that is the Republican majority, and indeed I think we'll, we'll, we'll even have the White House. Uh, but the situation, of course, of repealing a law uh, requires, uh, as you point out, 60 votes in the Senate. Uh, and even if you had 60 Republicans, it's possibly that uh, one or two would not go along with that. So the likelihood of actually repeal, that's why you're having many of the candidates uh, in the debates, uh, particularly uh, Governor Romney, saying, look, on day one of my presidency, I'm going to uh, issue waivers to all 50 states and the territories uh, from uh, the, the, the burden, really, of Obamacare, uh, things like uh, the, the, uh, the plus up of Medicaid to 133% of the federal poverty level, uh, ho costing the states billions of dollars. So uh, again, we're uh, maybe the Supreme Court, of course, will strike this down uh, in the spring of this uh, coming year, 2012, even before the fall election. So uh, we're going to do everything in our power, though, to continue to fight this bill. We voted to repeal it in the House. Harry Reid voted against it uh, and his Democratic colleagues in the Senate. So it wasn't repealed, but we're going to chip away as we did at this class program, uh, the Independent pay Payment Advisory Board, uh, the 1099 reporting issue, which was repealed. Uh, this, uh, this bill, as uh, Senator Orrin Hatch has said, is one lousy bill. Hey, Congressman, we played a, a few moments ago a piece of sound from the Vice President of the United States talking about how rape, he believes, will be on the rise. What did you make of that comment? I'm sure you saw it the other day where he made the case for this aid package to states. Is that a responsible uh, argument to make? Do you think the Vice President is right when he says that? You know, the, the Vice President is an affable, likable individual. I don't know him well, but I... I think he's, he is well liked by his colleagues, uh, was well liked by his colleagues in the Senate, but he definitely has a tendency toward a little foot and mouth disease, and, and this is just one more example of that. And uh, I think he needs to be awfully careful, as we all do, in regard to our rhetoric and hyperbole and, and maybe saying things that are uh, uh, half-baked and we don't really have the actual statistics that we can back it up. There's a truth truthometer uh, a section of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution that runs daily, and believe me, it makes us pay attention uh, to make sure that we make accurate statements. But did that cross the line when he said that? I mean, he basically said Republicans were going to vote for something that was going to make rapes go up in this country. Is that, is that a little bit much? 
Well, it is a little bit much. It's not as bad as that, that uh, House member from Florida that said uh, the Republicans' health uh, plan was to kill seniors or to let seniors die. Uh, of course, he was not reelected, and I think that had a lot to do with it. But, uh, yeah, it was over the top. There's no question about that. All right, Congressman Phil Gingry, Republican of Georgia, thank you so, so much for being here on Top Line. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Glad to be with you. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, so